Thanks. And Senator, thank you for bringing up the evacuation issue, because that's what I'm going to now talk about again. Uh, so thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it is my understanding that the Commission has never in its history turned down uh, a request for a exemption from having to have evacuation plans. Do any of you think I'm wrong on that? Tell me. An evacuation plan. And if so, which one did you turn down? I'll have to take that for the re record, Chairman. Okay. Just know that we've exhausted the record and there isn't any. But you go ahead and let us know if I'm wrong. Anybody else have anything that knows that? Okay. So let's be clear about this, folks. This, this commission has a very easy record to access on that question. And there has never been a time when an operator was told that they had to keep an evacuation plan in place. And let me tell you again, that's your job, is to ensure safety. And let me say this to the chairman. Is this not your quote? when asked whether or not a shutdown plant could be dangerous. This is what you said. The fire could well spread to older spent fuel. The long-term land contamination consequences of such an event could be significantly worse than those from Chernobyl. Do you remember saying that or writing that? Is That's from the 2003 paper? Yes. Uh, it was a collaborative effort, that paper. Did you sign that statement? I am, I am one of the authors, that is correct. Thank you. And is it not true that the NRC said in 01, spent fuel fires could have health effects comparable to those of a severe reactor accident? Does anyone think that that's a misstatement by myself? Okay, so let's just be clear. Anyone who says it's not, seri it's not serious because you've shut down if there's a fire doesn't know what they're talking about. Let's just be clear. Let's just be clear. Now, Senator Vitter, who interrupted me several times, uh, doesn't know that my operator there for San Onofre submitted these many pages of exemption requests. Now, let me just tell tell you what they're asking for. The proposed exemption will allow the operator to discontinue off-site emergency planning activities. Senator Markey, would you join me right up here? I know you were presiding, and we appreciate your being here. Let me say again, this is what they're asking you for. The operator is asking to discontinue off-site emergency planning activities and reduce the scope of on-site emergency planning. Examples of requirements subject to the proposed exemption that are related to discontinuing off-site emergency planning activities include, but are not limited to, requirements for off-site agency emergency plans, emergency planning zones, and ingestion pathway zones, the emergency operations facility, evacuation time estimates, off-site notification timeliness, off-site dose projections, protective action recommendations. Examples of requirements subject to the proposed exemption that are related to reducing the scope of on-site on -site emergency planning activities. Now look, they're basically asking to be let off the hook and they, if you grant this exemption, and you've never turned one down before, and you won't answer my question, none of you will, I'm going to show again the picture, I want Senator Markey to see this, of how close a fire in California came to that decommissioned plant. Now, do any of you know how many hot fuel, spent fuel rods are in, in that plant? I do not have an exact number. I can take that for the record. If you Anybody like. else know how many? Just for the record, 2,600. Do you know what it was designed for? The original design or yeah. after the yeah. re-racking had been done? If it was the original design yeah. and the open frame racks, probably about a quarter of that amount. 1,300. So this doesn't even go into other decommissioned plants. 
So anyone who says that a shutdown plant is not as dangerous has to just read what the chairman herself said, read what the NRC said, the consequences of an event could be significantly worse than those from Chernobyl. And I got to tell you, I represent those people, just like Senator Vitter represents his people and worries night and day about their safety from hurricanes and the rest. I worry about my people. And I'm not going to stop because I can't get any one of you to commit to me that you will turn down this request, this request for everything that they want to waive. And you've never turned it down before, and you won't answer the question. And that, yes, would you like to answer hey, that? If I just, for clarification, yeah. this commission has not received any document or request for commission decision making on this topic. Well, then you don't know your work, because sure it's March 20. No, I'm sorry. This was sent to you on March 31st. So what happened to your record keeping here? People didn't give you this information? Madam Chairman, why doesn't Commissioner know about this? It's, it's sent to the staff. It has not been brought up to the Commission. How long did the staff sit on it before they let you know about it? As I said before, the staff, we have an established process and the staff does a detailed technical analysis. We do not take these decisions lightly. We take them very seriously. When serious. are you going to have the staff report, Madam Chair? I, I do not know, but I can get you that information know. for you. You do not know. Well, let me tell you, you better know, because I've got 8 million people that live within 50 miles of that site. I had a fire that came within half a mile of that site, and the operator had to evacuate the people inside. And now they don't want to have evacuation plans. This is a no-brainer. <clears throat> I'm sorry. You can sit there and say, we take it seriously? Really? Well, then let me just tell you. This facility sits on an earthquake zone, on a tsunami zone. You know it happens. You yourself wrote in a collaboration with other people that an accident here could be worse than Chernobyl. So all I'm saying is, March 31st, I got this. I think it would be nice if the commissioners got this. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to make sure that before the staff goes through it, the commissioners get this. Yes, sir. Yes, Senator, th thanks for giving me a chance. To, of course. Um, I think we've all been aware that our staff has received the documents you're referring to. But as the chairman noted, it's in a staff process. I will tell you that I had a discussion Within the last week, with Mike Johnson, who I think is here, who is uh, briefing on the status of this and the fact it's working, and there's discussions with FEMA on these issues. So I will t I want to assure you that this is working through our process, and we owe you a response as to when a decision could be expected. I will await that response, but I want to say again, to me, there's an urgency, and to you, there should be an. This isn't just any power plant. This is a nuclear power plant that has many of these spent fuel rods, okay? In an earthquake zone, a tsunami zone, and a fire came within half a mile. So I hope the staff will work overtime, just like my staff does when there's an emergency, because that's what I consider it. Yes, Chairman, can I just, I just want to be clear that there, we Emergency preparedness will not be eliminated at the site. Okay, so I, I you're do agreeing. want to be clear about that. So you will agreeing. not eliminate emergency so, preparedness. So we now will. you're agreeing that you will not allow them this exemption that they're asking for all of this. We will not eliminate emergency preparedness. Sometimes it's reduced in scope after okay. we okay, considered then, thank request. You. Let me ask you that. So you will not waive the requirement for off-site evacuation plans? I do not know the details of this request yet. And you will not yet. waive their request to be exempted from having warning sirens? I do not know the details of this request. They have to prove to us that they can maintain the safe level of operation and under decommissioning that they... And you don't know right now if you will eliminate off-site evacuation plans, warning sirens, what about relocation centers? We will ensure that the site will be safe. 
and but we will ensure that me. there are adequate measures in place to respond okay. to any kind of radiological emergency. Fair of enough. course. Fair enough. That is our mission. Fair enough. So let me ask you this. Do you think off-site evacuation plans are a necessary part of that facility being safe? Do you believe personally? I don't, I can't, you can't answer for anyone else. Do you believe that having off-site evacuation plans are a necessary part of having that facility safe? An operating facility, of course, always requires evacuation plans. So you will not waive that requirement? I will have to consider it as, so as I said, we consider that. the site-specific requirements. You have never said no to exemptions of all off-site emergency plans, so that's why I'm drilling down on this, because the NRC, who cares a lot about safety, that's your job, have never, ever turned down such plans. So let me just tell you this. I am deeply troubled that commissioners haven't seen this. Commissioners, maybe they knew about the fire. If I were one of you, I certainly would have said, what's happening? This could have been, I don't even want to say, the type of disaster. All I have to do is quote the chairman in her 2003 paper in which she said, the fire could well spread to older spent fuel. The long-term land contamination consequences of such an event could be significantly worse than those from Chernobyl. Senator Vitter. <laughs> 